Thank you very much. Uh, uh, I would uh, not be starting before complimenting the most dynamic AIOS we've ever had. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Feroz, for having me. I'm going to share you share with you this case, uh, which is a case of belephrophimosis and uh, how uh, all the efforts uh, were scarred. So we have a 15 year old female with ptosis and epicanthus inversus syndrome and uh, a previous history of surgery at around five years of age elsewhere. And we can see uh, uh, that she's around 7.5 diopters of myopia. And we can see that there's an earlier scar there, a little bit of hypertrophy, but this, this surgery has taken place at five years of age. And after that, most probably the patient got a little dissatisfied with the results or had not been properly counseled. So we did a detailed counseling and uh, uh, planned a YV plasty, a medial canthoplasty with or without uh, shortening or um, plication of the MPL followed by a ptosis surgery. We talked to the uh, parents, but the parents seemed to be reluctant because they didn't want multiple surgeries. And uh, finally, the patient did not turn up. Uh, we saw the patient again eight years later, and uh, she was 23 years of age. Uh, this is 2007. And uh, patients now were desperate about treatment, uh, and patient was very, very enthusiastic. And uh, uh, myopia was stable at around uh, 11 diopters. She was using contact lenses. And she had literally finished her studies. Now she was into another stage where they were desperately looking for treatment. So uh, they refused treatment on the general anesthesia. So they were explained that there are going to be multiple surgeries here. So uh, we did uh, a viviplasty, a medial canthoplasty on both sides uh, in two sittings. But as soon as we saw that, uh, uh, we finished that part in March, we could see that there was some amount of uh, hypertrophy of the scar because a big uh, a plasty was done there, medial canthoplasty was done there. And we started massaging the scar and the scar uh, started going down. In May, we did a super maximum LPS section in the right eye. And you could see the scar in the, uh, on the left side has gone worse. The massage was continued. And in June, we did a maximum uh, LPS section in the left eye. And uh, I would want to point out here that this patient found out a very innovative way of uh, keeping the inverse frost suture. She pulls the pin up uh, uh, rather than tape it on the forehead. She, pulls the, she ties this inverse frost suture on the, um, because she got a lot of experience by now. So in June, uh, we seem to be having a reasonably good ptosis correction and the scar is better on the right side, but it's worse on the left side. And the patient is suddenly starting getting very dissatisfied with the results. There is there's a, still some persistent edema on the left upper lid and the lid crease is not uh, exactly perfect, but this is not what is giving us the trouble. The trouble is the hypertrophy of the scar. So uh, because we are in the process of fixing things, most probably we, we let this scar uh, get uh, unattended because there were bigger things happening. So the massaging continued. And after that, we realized in July that we, we cannot go uh, let this go. And we did an intralesional steroid injection. 20 milligrams were injected directly into the fibrinous portion of the scar repeated uh, twice, three weekly. Patient was very irritated by this time by the number of follow-ups, uh, also related to her refusing uh, 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 surgery under genesthesia, where we would have cut down the surgery to two uh, sittings. Anyway, a patient was uh, definitely getting better, but there was a persistent scar. So uh, the, you can see the lid edema on the left side is now less. The lid crease is better. There's a hypertrophy of, of the scar is also less, but uh, because uh, all oculoplastic surgery is basically, especially on the, uh, is, is, is cosmetic. So patient is still very dissatisfied considering the age at which we are handling this case. So uh, we went ahead and uh, corrected her 11 diopters of 
uh, 11 adapters of myopia, hoping for the LASIK wow effect, and that definitely happened. But uh, in small uh, cities where people are very closely connected, there's uh, one day two parents coming, another day uh, one parent, another day the uncle, auntie, everybody is turning up and telling us, doctor, everything is fine. Uh, the post lasik correction is fine. Uh, so I go ahead and uh, give an intralesional steroid again. And you can see that there's some amount of atrophy and there's a fatty layer developing there. So patient understands that she's getting better, but there's a butt attached to it. And all the relatives, uh, for two reasons, one is the amount of money they pay for uh, repeated uh, surgeries, the LASIK, and the number of visits they had to do and the follow-up. And uh, at the end of it, uh, she definitely thanked me, but there was a lot of stress in those nine months area. And that nine month effort, which seemed to be reasonably good, uh, uh, but for the scar was quite a strenuous one. So uh, what we're talking about is the possibility of a small scar or hypertrophic scar because it's on the face, uh, uh, giving a bad taste to a otherwise good effort. So could it be avoided? And what sutures are generally good for this to avoid it? What are the management options and what I should have done differently? And the counseling part. I'm sure I counsel the patient very well, but even then uh, uh, there are many uh, problems which are associated with a case like this. Thank you very much for your kind attention.